Hi, and welcome to today's episode of Piano TV. So today I wanted to sit down and talk to you guys about 12 common problems that I see time and time again, adult beginners have at the piano. Now, obviously everyone is highly individual, so not all of these will apply to you, but these are the common themes that I see again and again in my like decade or so of teaching piano to adults and you know kids, but this is an adult centric video. This originally began as a concept for just one video, but the more I kept exploring these, the bigger and bigger the video got. So I decided in order to properly explore everything in depth that I needed to break this into two videos. This is a two-parter. We'll talk about the first six problems today. And then in the next video, we'll talk about the other six problems that I see. So let's get started. <laughs> Problem number one is wanting to be better than you are. So maybe you're like on the internet and you're listening to some pretty nice sounding piano music and you think to yourself, I could totally do that. Except as a beginner at the piano, you probably can't do that. So then you're frustrated and you go to your method books and you work through songs like Row Row Your Boat and you feel like it's just, an, it's just a kid's song. It's an insult to your intelligence. So what do you do then? Do you just like, burn your method books. It won't go in, it won't go in. You get the idea. The best solution I think is patience. I know it's not the like super sexy answer, but I think it's the, the right answer. You're not gonna be doing row, row your boat forever. You're not gonna be doing these beginner pieces forever. And just because a piece is meant for a beginner, like row your boat, and just because it sounds objectively easy, doesn't mean that it is easy. In fact, if you're a beginner, it's not gonna be easy. And that's the whole point of these beginner pieces in the first place. So, okay, if you're learning like the beginner basic pieces in a method book, if you play it for your friend, they're not gonna be like, whoa, the masterpiece. And neither will you, but at the same time, it's still gonna challenge you if you haven't gone through those phases yet. So just keep in mind, everyone has to kind of make those first baby steps. And it's not gonna sound really, really beautiful and elaborate right away because you haven't built those skills. So just give yourself time and patience. So problem number Number two, and this relates to the first problem, you are bored with beginner level pieces like row, row, your bro. So, okay, I get it. Like it's, it's important to get through all those foundational pieces you need to build from the ground up, yada, yada, yada. You already know that. You know that you have to work from the very beginning, but is there anything you can learn? Is there any song you can play, any piece you can play that's like not gonna sound so basic? So then problem number three, in direct contrast, completely opposite to problem number two, your pieces are way too tough and sitting down at the piano to practice is frustrating. So sometimes the pieces you're learning might feel super tough. Like you, you open your piano books, you play maybe like a line or two of the music and then you, your head feels like it's gonna fall off. Now this problem is almost always because in actuality, the pieces are too tough. And this happens because as adults, we're intellectually capable of understanding music that we're not physically capable of playing. So what I mean by that is you can look at the music and you can be like, okay, I get that. I can read those notes. I see the patterns. You get it in your brain. And then you try to translate that through your hands, but your hands can't do it. Your brain can do it, but your hands can't do that. So a lot of the times we pick music that's at our brain's level, but not at our hands level, which often needs to be a little simpler. The solution for this problem is twofold. It should be pretty obvious, but number one, just get easier music. It's as simple as that. And number two, try experimenting with uh, simple exercises. Books like the Adult Piano Adventures or Kabalevsky's for Children or any of those early level books, you might flip through them and be like, that looks super easy. But the fact is, is once you start trying them, there's often little hidden challenges in there that your fingers are gonna have to work through. And that's, that's why we have to do these beginner method books so we can kind of overcome all of those physical obstacles. It's it's better to play an easy piece well than to play a really challenging piece that's like riddled with errors. So scale back a bit, and I think that'll really help you out if this is something you struggle with. But another thing that I, I think is a good idea is learn some finger exercises, some short studies, stuff like scales and triads and like journeys, little exercises, things like that, that are really quick to learn and quick to accomplish because they give you that instant boost. Because learning a piece can sometimes take a while. It takes like a week or two to learn a piece. So it's a slower boost, whereas you can learn a scale in a day 
day and you can get kind of that like instant hit. So just as an example, when I teach kids, I get them started in three separate books that all run parallel. So they have a lesson book, which has all their songs, all their pieces. They have a theory book, which is like homework, which you should probably do too. And then I give them a technique book. And the technique book is like little, little song fragments and little, little exercises that they can just like accomplish immediately and and it helps them learn their pieces and it's amazing like how how much it boosts their confidence and we're not so different as adults if we can learn something quickly it boosts our confidence so I think that's something to explore so problem number four is not making the connection between the pieces you learn in your lessons and the music you listen to on the radio so lesson music can seem kind of abstract and separate from the music you listen to on the radio because Well, radio music is catchy, it's fun, and you can sing along with it. And piano lesson music is full of note reading, like A's and B's and half notes and whole notes. And it's it's all the same music. But I feel like sometimes we can compartmentalize our lessons. And we just kind of view it as this separate thing from the music that we listen to on a daily basis and enjoy. Problem number five is laziness. I mean, most of us face this and no one really wants to admit that they're lazy. But it's a thing and it happens to all of us. I think, I think in a way we're almost more lazy as adults than we are as kids, because at least when we're kids, we have our parents like harping on us to do this and do that. And it kind of forces, we have an outside force that makes us do things. But as an adult, a lot more of our motivation has to be self created. So it's easy to let things slide. <laughs> Another thing that us adults tend to do is we we often hide behind the excuse of busyness. Oh, I can practice piano because I'm so busy. But the reality is, is most of us could probably find like 10 minutes here or there that we could carve out for practice. It's more of an issue of managing priorities. So sometimes the solution is to just do it. Just practice. Stop procrastinating. If you haven't practiced today, stop this video, go to your piano, go practice. But a lot of the times, and I don't want to get into too much of a tangent here, but sometimes it goes deeper than laziness. Sometimes that just seems like it's the problem. But if we dig down another layer, we find that the problem is fear, fear of not being very good. So if we avoid practicing, then we also avoid being bad at something. If we're a beginner, maybe we feel like, oh, I'm not very good at this. I'm not good at piano. Because who is good at piano when they first start? right? (laughs) Who's good at anything when they first start? So you subconsciously avoid practice because that way you avoid the shame of feeling like you're bad at something. So I think that it helps to think like a child in this case. So a kid, kids are constantly learning. They have to. They're like learning how to be a human, right? They're in school. They're learning new things every day. So they get used to feeling like they don't know anything. Like kids are just more comfortable with failure than adults because they're so used to being in that type of environment. But what happens to us adults is we can get this sense of like, we can get this illusion of completion, that feeling of, okay, I'm done learning now. I'm an adult. I know how to do life. I know how to be human. Now I can just like kick back in my knowledge and rest on my laurels. But the reality is, is it is an illusion because if we ever stop the learning process that, you know, we start as a kid, we're going to stagnate. We're going to get bored. We're going to get boring. And no no one wants to be boring. I mean, all life is learning, right? And part of any learning process is making mistakes, especially as a beginner. So there's going to be growing pains when you're first learning how to play piano, but be gentle with yourself. Everyone makes mistakes at the beginning. It doesn't mean you're bad. It doesn't mean you're bad at piano. It just means that You're a normal human going through a normal learning experience. Problem number six is your hands don't work well together. This ties into a point we've already discussed today. So for adult beginners, you're going to intellectually grasp concepts long before your fingers are capable of those concepts. So for example, we might talk about, I don't know, some patterns in the Goldberg variations, like we did a video on recently. And we could talk about that and that's making sense to you and your brain grasps it. You can even read the notes and and dissect all the parts, but that doesn't necessarily mean that your hands are capable of executing it. You you get it in your brain, but your hands, there's, there's a missing link. So hopefully you've enjoyed part one of this video and stay tuned for the next one. I hope that you all get some value out of both of these. I always really like talking about this kind of thing because learning as an adult is such a 
it's such an interesting and delicate process and there's a lot of there, we we can beat ourselves up and it's there's just a lot of hurdles to overcome but anyway stay tuned for the next video thank you so much for watching this video thank you to everyone who helps make these videos possible you can come and visit me over on my social media platforms and i think that's about everything so i will talk to you guys in the next video bye This originally became... Cat. Whoops.